Hello, everybody. It's Ken Faulkner, and I'm bringing you another knife video back from Blade Show. Yep, it was a it was a great weekend of a lot of knives, a lot of knives, and I bought a lot of knives. I got 18 knives. I'm going to show them to you. Talk to you about Blade Show. If you've never been to my channel, uh, just kind of you know talk about blade show and what's going on there's gonna be some background stuff that you may not know if you've never been to the channel before but anyhow um we'll get into it i don't have any video things were a little bit crazy this weekend talked about the the cat uh getting sick before i left and it just kind of was looking better but then it got worse and oh it's a lot going on i just found out something about it let's get into the knives we got to talk about some of the stuff that I bought. I'm going to just run through them quickly. Uh, kind of like my collection video I, I was doing um, before Blade Show. Didn't quite get it finished because of all the craziness. But I'm going to finish it up, though. Um, and I'm going to start out with the lower price for the show, what I bought. Uh, this one was for the girlfriend. She couldn't make it to the show because the cat got sick. So this is the uh, Dessert Warrior uh, from Blade HQ, the Classic SD. And I got one of these four and, and given it to another friend. And uh, then Vicky was saying that she wanted to get one, but she didn't make it to the show. So I, I bought it. Didn't tell her I bought. Uh, I, I got it for her until I got back. Kind of help, um, you know, soften the blow as to all the knives that I uh, got while I was there. And, you know, it helped. It helped, for sure. So, anyways, basics, classic SD. You got your your regular pin blade, your uh, nail file with a little screwdriver, and you got your most useful tool on the whole thing, in my opinion, is the scissors. Uh, I very I have one on my keychain, and I very rarely use the knife. Uh, it also has tweezers, and tweezers are handy. Toothpick don't really use that too much. I'd actually lost the toothpick on mine for a long time. And decided I should go ahead and get one. So I got like some backups. Uh, you can get them on Amazon if you're ever interested in trying to replace something like that. Because they're easy to kind of lose. But anyway, this guy's only 20 bucks, So that's the beginning. Uh, this is the lowest price thing that I bought there. Other than swag and things like that. I got a lot of swag. But I'm just going into the knives uh, today. Speaking of swag, this uh, this uh, Hank here. Um, Gondek EDC. I thought that was super cool. Look what I got at Blade Show. So I can kind of throw things down on top of it. It's a very awesome um, uh, Hank. And uh, anyway, uh, he actually threw that in with something else that I bought. Moving on to the next knife. Uh, dagger knives. Um, as I was doing my collection videos, I, I did have a dagger knife. I do have a dagger knife, hopefully. But I don't know where the heck it is. So it's kind of lost. So... Um, uh, I saw the dagger was going to be at the show. Uh, I never seen them there before. Maybe they've been, and I didn't know. They got this very um, signature kind of crazy pocket clip that works really well. It's the screaming skull. Uh, my other one that I have uh, had a uh, screw in each eye. This guy looks like he's kind of only got one eye. It's funny. Anyhow, uh, this is um, similar to the, to the arrow which I have or had. But this one, instead of G10, it's got this uh, FRN. But the the upside to the FRN is it got these cool little patterns. It looks like little skulls to me, which would fit with the uh, pocket clip. And it's grippy. It's good and grippy. Um, you know, not my favorite handle material. Uh, we're talking about um, 8CR14 MOV, not 13, 14 MOV. Interesting. Uh, I never heard of 14 MOV before, and I looked it up. Uh, you know, all those numbers and letters, they all mean something. You know, the 8 is going to be your carbon percentage, and the 14 is, on this in this case is uh, chromium. So the chromium has like 1 percentage more chromium, so maybe a little bit uh, less corrosive, uh, corrosion, a little more corrosion resistant. Anyway, I, I dig the shape. I always like these kind of leaf-shaped blades. Um, this one's actually got a little bit better action. I can flick it a little better than my uh, other uh, arrow that I hopefully I will find at some point. I was going to look for uh, a Parrot. If you've seen one of those, it's like a much bigger knife, but they had sold all, out all of those before I got to their booth. So moving on, CJRB. 
the couple of little cute guys. I'm going to knock out two at once of the 18 that I bought. Um, so these guys are coming these little uh, sheets, I guess you want to call them. It's almost like a slip. And it's got a cord on it because it's going to be hard to get it out otherwise. And this is called the chip. So this one here is kind of like a tuxedo kind of version with the black and the white. Um, or Stormtrooper, as some people would say. I don't know if you get in trouble for that or not. No one's going to care about me. I'm a little channel. It's kind of a good thing about being a little channel. Don't get a lot of uh, trolls. Don't get a lot of negativity here. And a lot of good people. And anyway, so this is a little uh, cleaver shaped. Uh, I mean, that can't be more than an inch long blade. And I think he's kind of cute. Um, if the girlfriend doesn't steal these um, because she thinks they're cute, uh, then they'll probably show up in a giveaway at some point. And the other one is also the chip, but it is the dagger shape. So it's pretty cool. A little carbon fiber on that sucker. That's it's kind of cool looking. Anyway, those are just fun little knives. I thought it'd be good little swag uh, in a, in a giveaway. Unless I like fall in love with it, I've I've done that before. I have bought knives to do on to give away on giveaways, and I end up liking it too much to give it away. I'm really um, a knife hoarder and addict, 100%. Um, I, I was saying I I felt like at Blade Show like I was like an alcoholic and a, and a distillery uh, tour, you know. I just going crazy. Uh, the next one on the list is a Tuya knife. Yeah, you you know they make some pretty nice, um, more expensive knives. And I've been interested in getting Tuya knives, but I'd already spent most of my money by the time I got around to their booth. But uh, I ended up picking this one up, and this one is for a giveaway. And I think I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to hold you know hold on to it and give this guy away. Uh, there's some other two years that I would like to pick up that are more expensive and probably not give away But this one is pretty cool. It's called the bruiser It's a d2 steel. I think I always say it over and over again. D2 is a good steel uh, You just have to be careful, you know, keep it coated or whatever um, G10 handles so this is a basic budget type of build but you know these these knife companies that that make more quality knives, uh, more expensive quality knives. When they do a budget knife, I always find that the action is really good. It's kind of like a uh, cut um, are really good. Um, you know, there's other ones, Arts and Cutlery with CJRB. Um, uh, you know, the CJRB stuff is really good, and I think it's because they they know how to make good knives and they don't know how to make bad knives. So you know. Even with the lower quality materials, you get a, a good knife. I love the size of this thing. It really fits in my hand well. Just fits good. I mean, it's got a good place for your thumb. No jimping up there. Back here is a little bit, but not much of a grip. But yeah, it's a great uh, knife. Um, I think it'll be a good giveaway one. I got to uh, add in one of my knives, and I got an 8010 that I'm going to throw in with it. That should be pretty cool. Got a, a swag. I'm not showing all the swag I got at the show, but you'll see stuff as I... Start to do giveaways. Got a bunch of cool stuff. Um, another little thing I want to throw out there. You ever see one of these guys? If you ever watch Grumpy Grunt's channel, he's got these cool little figurines that he does. See, it says Grumpy Grunt right there on the butt. And uh, this glows in the dark. It's very cool. It's a little monkey. He calls all his uh, viewers monkeys, so... Uh, <laughs> I was happy to, you know, I, I chatted with him a little bit. Very cool guy. Super nice. You know, very, you know, some of the bigger channel. I think, you know, Grumpy, I don't know how big his channel is, but I know he's bigger than me. And some of these big channels, you guys are really open to talking to you. Some of the bigger guys, they tend to be like they're too busy and and busy with other stuff. But anyway, Grumpy was awesome. I was so glad to meet him and talk to him. Moving on. Uh, the next knife is from a company I've never heard of before, and that happens at the show. You're going around the tables, you're looking at knives, things catch your eye. And uh, they had a whole bunch of these uh, OTFs sitting there. And here's the name of the company. It's um, uh, Armed Force Tactical. And you can see that USA right there. I don't know for sure. I can't guarantee for sure that this one is USA made. But, you know, some of the stuff I read online... It's like they don't really come out and say it, but then in comments, and I don't know. And I did a little, you know, I said, hey, where, where are these made? And it says, oh, they're made in all different kinds of places. 
So I can't say 100% sure that, that it is USA made because it has the flag on it like that. But it's only 60 bucks. I mean, well, actually, I think they were asking 70. Um, but 60 bucks is what I paid for it. I couldn't find a lot of information. Um, it looks like they're selling these things on the Bud K uh, site. So it's kind of like budget stuff there. But uh, handling it, this is really heavy. Um, they had some aluminum ones, um, but this one's heavy. And I do like a heavy knife. If you've watched my channel before, you know I kind of say that from time to time. It's a little one. It's it's only like uh, four and a half inch here, so the blade's probably like three and a half or something. But the action is good. And listen, <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> it's a dong dong. The actual material they're using on this um, here, I think it says it's a zinc alloy. So that's really unusual as far as I'm concerned. I, I've <laughs> That sound just cracks me up. 440C steel. Um, so yeah, um, this one, the only, I couldn't really find a lot of information. They don't have their own website. Uh, the model number looks like it's 236BK. Um, it doesn't look too bad. It's, it's like I think there's some paint on here that's kind of coming off, but it almost looks like it's got that worn sort of look, a little wearing off there. Don't really mind that. Um, you know, sixty bucks for for an OTF that snaps like that. I haven't had any failures or anything like that. It just really seems to be well made. Um, it's not a glass breaker. It's just got a little lanyard spot, which is kind of cool. I've never broken any glass with any of my knives. Uh, I'm sure a lot of first responders have had to deal with that kind of thing, but uh, I do have a glass breaker in my car that I have ready just in case of emergency, but I've just never had to deal with it. But you never know what's going to happen. This is a fun little knife. Uh, not legal to carry in California because it's slightly over two inches. It's kind of crazy. Hopefully, knife rights, I know they want to take that stupid law down, but it hadn't happened yet. I kind of like this thing. So if it is USA made, 60 bucks for an OTF, that's freaking amazing. So uh, they also have aluminum ones, like I say, so you like the lighter ones. And they all seem like good quality. Um, so, you know, I just don't want to guarantee anything, but, uh, you know, it's advertised USA made. It doesn't really say USA made, but it does have the flag on there. Um and, you know, it kind of, with that armed force tactical, kind of seems like it's a military kind of thing. But anyway, let's move on. Rosecraft Blaze. That's a, now we're getting to a company that you've heard of before. Uh, well, of course, you've heard of some of these other ones. But um, I specifically went to their booth for this one. Um, I was trying not to buy, you know. And, and so this one kind of fell to the wayside because uh, I'm not... You know, I don't have a huge number of slip joints. I definitely have, you know, I definitely like them as nice, but uh, folder, modern folders is more my thing. Just kind of like the, the uh, out the front. I don't really have, it's a, a smaller percentage of my collection, but I just dug this one from the first time I saw it. That green uh, micarta, which is very smooth. And it's like you almost would think it's a G10, but... Um, that skull, I really like that. And I love the shape. I love this handle shape. That slope down. Uh, I know that uh, there's the sway back knives, but I've always been a fan of that kind of the forward kind of downward cant. It cuts really well in your hand when you hold it. You, that blade is pointing down because of the way the handle is. And it cuts really well. And Rosecraft always has good quality and their slip joints are good prices. Actually, everything is good prices uh though obviously if they end up doing what they want to do which is go to a usa made and i don't from what i from talking with them it doesn't sound like they're going to go full usa made for all their stuff but they want to make some stuff in the u.s um but anyway right now the prices are, are good but they will have to raise their price if they if they make in the usa so anyway great great knife i think it's d2 steel which is good Got a little schmutz left over from that little China sticker they always have on there. I like to take those off as soon as I can get those off. But yeah, beautiful work. Andy Armstrong, he's he's the man. His wife is super cool and fun. If you ever get a chance to talk to her, she's nice too. Um, 
Good people. Good, good, good people. Rosecraft Blades. This is the Obed Creek Bow Trapper. So, anyway, great knife. I'm so glad I was able to pick one up. Next one on the list. Another one, a uh, company I've never heard of before. This I got, I picked this one up on Sunday, and I was like down to my last dollar. Um, and I walked by this one, and I was just, I'm just looking at stuff. And, and usually I'm able to kind of like keep going and say, nah, I'm not going to buy. But I, I really like this one, and I don't know that much about the company. Win Plus. I know you can get some of their knives. Not this particular one. When I was looking around online, I was trying to see where you can get it. Um, but the Amazon has some of their stuff, so you kind of know where, where we're going with that. But this is titanium, and it's got, it's got a cool kind of bronze kind of looking titanium. I love the – it's got the milling and everything like that. I was really impressed. And, and you know, I'm flicking them in and out. And this is something you can't really experience um, if you're um, looking at it on online or something like that but when you're actually feeling it and and checking it out um you get to really see you know what this knife is like to handle and they were you know on sunday they usually kind of come down their price um this thing was listed where i found it um for 65 dollars and i ended up they said they would give it to me for uh for 40 and it was no 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 see you know they were saying thirty dollars thirty dollars for this knife and then that was kind of like i can't pass that up and uh i went to give them a fifty dollar bill and they didn't find change correct change to give me back and i said well i can give you 27 they took it it's kind of like uh, buying stuff down in Mexico. Uh, I don't know. I've never been down there, and I've never done the haggling. I'm never, I'm not much of a haggler. Usually, when I'm haggling, I, I, like I'm buying stuff from people on on a secondary, and I'll tell them, "Hey, it really is worth more." It's it's usually friends, you know, friends that I know that are giving me a, too good of a deal, and I say, "Hey, let me just pay you a little bit more," especially when they when they need some money, and that's why they're selling their knives. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so this one, Win Plus, has anybody heard of that? I the the flipper works. They had uh, some models with the the uh, the button that like the truffles knife has, uh, the button kind of release. Or um, uh, Vosti has one that's coming out. It wasn't it was there at the show, but it's still prototype. But anyway, it's it's kind of seems like a, one of the hottest items. And they had one there from this company. Uh, there was more expensive, so I didn't pick one up. But um, but this was just a great deal and a nice little knife. I mean, it's lightweight, uh, titanium. Uh, I think we're talking, yes, yeah, we're talking D2 steel. And again, I say it over and over again, I like that steel. It's only a thumb stud on one side, but that's okay. Because it's got this uh, this front flipper that works really well. And uh, yeah, I like that knife for somebody I've never heard of before. Uh, but I can't, I can't swear by it. I've only had it for a little while. It's just fun little guy. This next one is an interesting story. Um... It looks like a Civivi Brazen, except. So I was, I really didn't know what was going on with this one because I was uh, walking around the show and I found this little booth, talking to the guys. Um, the name of the of the company was Kronos Knives, uh, but then I see the C. I'm going, hey, that's a Civivi, right? And they say, oh, it's brazen. Of course, I've heard of the brazen before. I don't have one. And I wasn't familiar enough to know from looking at it that, oh, yeah, that's the brazen. Um, I know I've seen it before, but I just didn't have it stored in my memory banks um, that it's this cool Tonto shape, kind of dual grind thing. And they said, and I don't know exactly what the deal is. And there's the name of the company right there, Kronos. Um they said what they did is they, they, they talked with them. It's almost like an exclusive. So they, they have a version of the brazen um, with this uh, uh, aluminum handles, aluminum backspacer, cool blue pop. And they had a couple different ones, different colors. This is the one I picked because I like that blue. It really popped well. Uh, I think they had a red one. Uh, you know how that aluminum handles look really good with the red. It's got a great texture on it. Feels really good in the hand. Talking with the guys, they seem really nice and very excited about what they're doing. I guess they've only been around for a couple years. 
And uh, so, yeah, they did this little collab or whatever you want to call it because, you know, they got their, their name on one side and the C on the other. And they gave me a good deal. Uh, I was almost out of cash. And they said, well, we don't really take cash. We can only take cards. And I go, oh, man, <laughs> now we're talking. So I'm almost out of cash, but I, I still have a card. I still can, you know, put some money on a card. I didn't really put much, I didn't really charge much. Most of the stuff I bought at the show, and I, and I would recommend that you bring lots of cash if you're intending to buy a lot of knives. Uh, even if you're not, uh, it might be good to have it because sometimes the ATM uh, empty out there. I heard that they emptied out pretty early because people are just spending money at these shows. Great knife. Uh, really, I don't think I've ever really checked out a Brazen before, but uh, yeah, I just like the whole story of it and then how they put it together and came over the design. There's one of the guys at the booth and said, hey, that, you know, when I picked this color, he said, hey, that's my design. It's like, I guess they all kind of had ones that they liked. It was like an all blacked out one, this one with the blue, and then I think I had the red one. And they all look cool, but this is the one I picked. So, uh, $65. I think they gave it to me for $60. I can't remember. It's, it's all blurry in my head. Moving on. We got uh, Tempest Knives. Now, this is another one that I specifically came for before the show. Uh, I saw that <laughs> KC was uh, going to bring uh, some of his... his um, microbursts and except that they're going to have these custom ones is what he called them so freak show if you know freak show he's helped uh casey with a lot of um um uh, of his qc work on his knives from tempest uh knives and uh tempest blades but and he had his own booth too it was very cool um but he redid this Changed out the handles. Obviously, this is different than your standard microburst. Um, this they had red, blue, different colors. Very cool. And the the blade has a cool acid wash on it that is really uh, awesome. And I guess um, and I don't know Freak Show that well, but apparently he's a good sharpener and he put a really cool edge on that one. Uh, we could try it out and see how it'll cut. Let's see what's going on. My girlfriend's like, she takes all the knives after I get home and says, oh, let's check that out. Wow, look at that. Woo, just sweet. I like it. So definitely a great edge on there. So yeah, I picked this one up. This is like uh, probably the second knife I bought. Uh, and it's a good thing too because he sold out of all of his little, you know, custom uh, microbursts. He had, I guess he had a few other standard microbursts. Maybe some jet streams left over, but I mean, um, yeah. And he had a lot of his um, prototypes coming out. Um, I think there's one called the Downdraft that I really, really liked. They had the Microjet. I'm not as impressed with that, but a lot of people liked it. There's a lot of buzz about that one. If you like smaller knives, because uh, I do have the jet stream and I like that one. And I just, you're just not really interested so much in the smaller version. But this one's really cool. I, I was hoping to get a microburst, and I kept putting it off, putting it off, and then they've sold out, supposedly, and then they kind of found some and did this with it. So this is cool. This is like when you go to the show, you kind of like to get something like this that you can't just get anywhere. Um, moving on, uh, if you are familiar with and it, I don't hear that much out there about eutectic knives, but... I went over to the Leon Ma booth, and I just kind of looking around. I'm going, "Hey, I have two Eutectic knives, and that I, I thought that's all they had out. This one actually, uh, I tried to look it up, and it's not even on the website yet. So this is a a new Eutectic, and apparently um, it's still not dropped yet. And that happens a lot at Blade Show, and that's kind of cool in Blade Show that you can do that. Uh, I got. Another one like that uh, a little bit later on that you've heard about, but it hasn't dropped quite yet. It's coming out pretty darn soon, though. But this one, I don't know when it's going to drop. Uh, I talked to Liam Ma a bit. Uh, I really hadn't had a chance to chat with him that much. So this might have been uh, like later in the day or just a little slow time because, you know, a lot of these booths get so crowded. You really just can't talk to anybody for very long. Um Sunday's a good day for that. If if they aren't already left the show, and a lot of people do leave before Sunday comes along. 14C28N, uh, Eutectic. I don't know what the name of it is. 
Uh, this one does not have a, a flipper hole, but it does have that little that little fuller, and it flicks really well. The action on all of these Eutectic knives is great, and he's always got a great finger choil on the front. Feels so good in the hand. Really like him. I think I did I mention 14C 28N is a blade steel, and it's only uh, $85, I think, is what I paid for it. I get kind of lost. I mean, because it's not on the website, I don't know how much he's charging. It has um, that flick there. It's got the uh, flipper, and it's got a top flipper. So you got all that fidgetiness going on, which is very cool. And yeah, so you technic name to be, uh, hopefully when I actually do a full review, and I'll probably do full reviews on all this stuff, I'll know what the name of this one is. But uh, obviously G10, real grippy, great stuff. Moving on. This is kind of a cool one. Um, different, a little different for me. And it's a big one. We're going to have to back out for this one. Well, maybe, yeah, back out at least a little bit. So this one is called the Grande, which is a perfect name for it, Grande Fratello. And this is a Blade Show exclusive. The handle is an exclusive with this uh, color. Um, and you'll see that it is numbered. So I got number uh, 165 of 200. Um, Doug Micarta, Micarta, Micarta. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, I guess it's Marcaida, not Micarta. Anyway, if you uh, watch Forge and Fire, you know who he is. Um, he's one of the judges there. If you are big into Kali, Kali uh, Filipino martial arts, um, you probably know who he is from that too. He's a really big name in that area and um he um he does a youtube channel called sharp talk and i'm a fan of it i really like it because i have martial arts i've been kind of like a lifelong martial arts guy I'm getting kind of older a little harder to do it now but uh they talk about knives and knife fighting and stuff like that if you're into that you know if you're not you probably wouldn't find it interesting or if you're into filipino martial arts at all He's got a lot of cool stuff, but mainly it's knives, and he talks about different grips on knives. Try not to break the table. So, um, anyway, he's got this one. This one is kind of more of a cleaver design. Uh, he said it was kind of based on a Siberian cleaver, which is a certain type of cleaver. Big, heavy blade. Uh, it's uh, 420 stainless steel. Uh, he was trying to keep the price down. And what he said is, you know, for the show, he wanted to, you know, get something that was only, it was only $120. But there's a ton of steel here. It is a heavy knife. Great um, guard here on the finger. It's not going to slide up at all. There's just no way. Uh, great grip. Uh, big old fixed blade. Monster knife. Great sheath. I mean, it's really cool. All leather. And Doug Micarta. Micarta. My Markaida, uh, I got a chance to talk to him a little bit, and anyway, he was very busy taking pictures. Um, I don't have the box, but he signed the box for me. It's over there. We'll probably, if I do a review of this, we'll talk about that more. But anyway, big old monster fixed blade that I bought at the show. We're getting there. Kaiser. This is one that I wanted to get. I, I saw. Um, that uh, Apex Alchemy uh, had shown this one when he's doing. He's doing a ton. If you're into um, the hardness of steels and different knives, he's doing a ton of videos on that kind of stuff. He's got one of those testers now, and he's doing a bunch. If you want to have your blades tested, uh, he will do it free of charge. I know that some companies apparently, or some maybe even some YouTubers, uh, will do it and charge you a fee. All you have to do is ship it there and ship it back, and he will do it for free. So check out some of his videos. If you're interested in that, go ahead and, ch go ahead and check his videos. He's done a bunch of knives, and if you're you're into that stuff, I don't really care. be honest with you. I mean, it's, it's kind of curious sort of thing, but I really more am about uh, just how a knife works for me. Uh, I'm not really, I'm not even really so much into the different steels, but this one is Rex 45, and that's why he was doing the testing on it, because it's one of those steels that everybody's talking about. I do like to get these different steels in the collection, um, but a lot of times I can't tell the difference, personally. 
I don't do a ton of sharpening. I do some, um, you know, you probably know that if you've been watching. Uh, so I don't know from sharpening how it feels different. And uh, I don't like really pay attention to how long it takes to dull. I'm fine with sharpening a knife if it gets dull. I need to, do need to get a new sharpener. My uh, my old uh, work sharp precision is kind of uh, failing me. I need to get the pro. Titanium bolsters, uh, awesome. Uh, Kaiser, my, Mar <laughs> I'm going to say Markita. My Carta now. <laughs> <laughs> with a cool uh, darkening of it as you as you handle it feels great in hand I dig this kind of shape it's kind of a crazy kind of looking harpoon thing going on get your thumb up there good shimping here of course Kaiser does things very well the action is excellent great size knife full size for me uh, you can flick the the thumb studs on both sides and the t and the front flipper works really well this one is called the mystic uh, it's got a uh, milled titanium clip. The Mystic in in uh, R Rex 45. You probably can't see that. Anyway, move on. Devo Knives. Interesting story on this one. Okay, he said before the show that he was going to... And this is actually the first place I stopped. Of course, he was like right there at the entrance as well. But I did want to get there early because I was... This is another one, kind of like the uh, microburst, where I was sleeping on it, and I didn't get it because it's a smaller knife. Um, I'm not as much into the smaller knives, but um, this one's cool in hand because it, it does have that front uh, finger choil, um, you know, and so that helps with that. This is a very small knife. Uh, obviously, with the smaller knives, you don't really get as good of an action. Maybe you have to throw a little wrist in it because the blade weight is not as as good but this is the purple one which i think was the one that was selling out so fast when he first dropped it uh purple nurple unless i'm wrong i believe that's what they were calling it purple backspacer it looks great and this is a very cool knife but then when i brought this home and i was shown the girlfriend guess what happened she's decided to steal this from me of course, our collections intermingle. You know, I've shown a bunch of the stuff that that she has from her collection with my collection, and she's fine with me using any of the knives that she has, or even the ones that I bought for myself, and she ended up wanting to have uh, the baby banter is much like that, and she already uh, has taken that one over, so she's taken over this one. Uh, but I can see why it's super cool. Got that uh, camo carbon fiber thing going on. And uh, so, yeah, super cool uh, design. I'm glad I was able to get it because he only had like three that he bought to, to sell the show. He did have a prototype for the uh, lower cost one. I may pick one of those up so I can have it in my collection, even though I can still use this one whenever I want. But, yeah, the girlfriend's taking it over. Those grind lines are sick. Very cool. Uh, yeah. Great knife. Uh, glad I got it, even though it's been escotted. But, you know, that's all part of the fun. You know, I've been trying to get her more and more into knives. And so, you know, this is what you get when you do that. Moving on. Price on that one. I got it. Uh, I guess it's 175 So, I mean, that's another good thing about it. Jack Wolf Knives. Um, Devo is much like this. Um, I usually buy a Devo knife at every show I go because... Uh, Kevin and Colin are, are there at all the shows working hard and I usually buy a knife from them there also same goes for Jack Wolf and you may have heard that he is coming out with his fixed blade uh, he talked about it for a long time people always ask are you going to do a fixed blade and he says oh yeah maybe blah 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 uh, so he is putting out a fixed blade and he had to uh, I'll show more on this because you know with Jack Wolf, you always have that full presentation. You get all the stuff that goes along with it. I'll show you all that stuff when I do a full video on this. Uh, obviously, it's a different kind of slip because it's really a sheath. It's got a clip on it. Uh, this is cool because it's like that front pocket kind of clip, kind of like an ulti clip. Um, I, I actually carry this around the show after the first day um, for a couple days. It's just really good and convenient. Uh, it is about the same size at a loss and I'll, I'll go into some size comparisons when i do the actual video uh it's got black this is uh what they call uh black linen micarta and 
and it looks really cool. They have one that looked even cooler, but it wasn't available at the show yet. I think these are dropping on Friday of this week or somewhere around there. Check with somebody else to tell you exactly when that's going to happen. But it is like the size of one of his uh, his slip joints, but it is a fixie. Feels really good in hand, and he always brings those handle materials. I don't have any of his uh, slip joints. I probably have like five. I think I have five of them, maybe six now. I don't know. And this would probably be six or seven, uh, but it's uh, obviously a fixed fixed blade. But I don't have any with the black uh, linen in my carta, so I thought I'd get this one. But the one that was really catching the eye at the show was abalone and you know it's a crazy kind of thing but you have to see it on the knife it looks so so good and i think that's going to be kind of like the uh, what's that one the the one on the midnight jack that came out i don't remember the name of it but it's like the crazy some crazy color thing that's so cool. Um, this I think this abalone is going to be like that on this knife. Uh, this uh, sheath is ambidextrous, so you can put it in either way. But uh, what what uh, Ben was telling me is you want to be careful about putting it in because you don't want it to stab through the bottom of the sheath. So what you really want to do is kind of like uh, make sure it kind of follows along the line here. So that when it gets down to the bottom, the tip is is towards the tip of the sheath. Uh, so it's just something to kind of get used to. It's a little bit tight at first. It takes a little while to to get it right, but that's it. And so that's what it looks like in the sheath. And it's a awesome knife. I'm really excited about getting it. The uh, the price on that is two thirty five ish. Um. And yeah, um. So it's a little bit cheaper. He said it's cheaper to make than a slip joint. So he he's passing it on to the customers. Next one is a Vosteed. Um, this one I, I was excited about from the beginning. I, and I seem to remember that, remember this this was gonna be the Mayhem at first? Maybe they sold it for a while as the Mayhem. Uh, RSK Knifeworks, or RS Knifeworks, uh, is working with Vosteed um, to do production versions. And this is now called the RS Chaos is the name of it. And I was looking at it right when it first came out. I think they had it priced, if I, my memory is correct, at about $300. And Vosti, it was always more that budget type of, of brand. But you, you see that. And a lot of these companies are starting to come out with premium stuff. And I think the fact that they're working with uh, premium, because um, RSK uh, does custom stuff. Uh, the there was that mini Paragon that they did with Kaiser that that he did with Kaiser, the full size Paragon is a full on custom and we're talking you know over a grand you know maybe two thousand or something like that. So he does a bunch of custom work and usually just gigantic knives. But this one uh, I always liked it uh, and I thought the price was just wasn't quite there. But then now they're doing so many of these um, uh, top liner lock knives that this was the first one as far as I know that they were doing were. You push that button and it, and it pushes over the liner. So instead of doing a liner lock on this side, you're doing it here. Um, and it works really well. And, and they've been really talking about how cool this is. And the, the PSYOP is another knife. And I think there's another one that may be coming out um, with that same kind of locking thing. But it works so well. It really does. So I was glad I finally got a chance to pick one of these up. Uh, I was kind of on the fence. The guy said, oh, yeah, the PSYOP will probably be around for a while because it's brand new. So you might want to pick this one up. And it was only uh, $250. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> $250 may seem like a lot for a knife, but then when you think it's going to be $300 and they say $250, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, it's cheap. Yeah, that's funny. Funny the way the mind works, and especially if you got cash in your pocket ready to spend um, so Vosteed, uh, Vosteed had a bunch of great swag. When I do the video on this one, I definitely will do one on this one. I like really, the more I have it, the more I like it. Um, they had a lot of cool swag and I'll show you that. And I think that's really nice to, for a company to do that kind of thing. All right, moving on. This is one, probably the premier, premium knife, the, the most sought after in my brain at the show, uh, ever since I first started going to Blade Show, and I think it's 
early on. I mean, it's like five years ago. I think it was early on in Arcane Design's uh, career, so to speak. Uh, I saw their knives, and I wanted one since then. But back then, I was not spending the kind of money that they're asking for knives. And I just, I just couldn't do it. And then I kept putting it off. This is the story of my life. I keep saying it over and over again. And finally... I just had to. I had to uh, have it, now, especially when I heard uh, a while back, probably a couple years ago, because it was before um, Elijah Isham had that incident and he passed away, where he and uh, and um, Israel from Arcane Designs uh, collabed on this knife. It's just a match made in heaven, really, because these guys both have a super awesome uh, artistic flair on knives. And just a, 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 a design language. I mean, a real design language that, you know, it. you look at the knife and you know it's arcane design. Um, I don't know necessarily look at it and say for sure this is Elisha Isham design. But you could kind of see some of it. Uh, so they both kind of have that futuristic space age kind of. Uh, fantasy kind of uh, look about their knives. And this one is just awesome. Um, I, I, you know, Arcane Design has a lot of cool knives, but I finally decided that I needed to get one and I was going to go big. Um, this guy came in at $380 and it is in MagnaCut this time around. Uh, I think they were doing an M390 before. But yeah, if you if and you don't see any branding on this knife, which is kind of cool. But then if you pull it out part way, and you're probably not going to be able to read it because my camera is not so good. But on that blade, right there, very lightly, it says Magna Cut. So they're very subtle about all that stuff. But anyway, awesome knife. So glad I finally got it. This is like my. Uh, my big uh, purchase at the show. And that's it. That's it for... Oh! I skipped right past one. Sorry, guys. But it's also exciting, too. That's probably because I was so excited about the Arcane Design. I just I kind of, like, skipped over this one. But this one should not be skipped over. It's been around for a while. They had the automatic version. I don't know how long they had a manual version. Um, but definitely after the RAM lock started coming out... This one uh, was more available. And right now, I mean, you can get this way easier than ever before. It's a Microtech. So talking about branding, you know, opposite of what you're going to get with uh, Arcane Design. They're putting their name all over this thing like it's uh, like it's uh, um, a tattoo on uh, some punk rocker. So this one's actually not that bad compared to some of them. They they really put all this stuff on here. This is not too bad. They got the little claw thing there. They got the Borka blades. I think that must be Borka because Borka blades is the one that does the design on this. But man, it really falls. The action is so good on this thing. There's really not a lot of detail on it, but oh man, it swings really good. So you just have to give it a little bit of wrist and it, it works, especially when you're not under the camera. And yeah awesome i mean the jimping on here is just supreme the aggression uh, i mean both of these knives when you when you look at the, both of these you kind of get the feel for if you've never been to my channel before you kind of get the feel for what i really like in knives when you look at these two things um obviously i got a wide variety of different you know types of knives that i get from budget to more expensive ones don't have the customs and all that stuff but uh yeah this one is very cool as well uh, 317 well, the price on it. It's not too bad. I think that's what it was. I, you know, I don't remember what I exactly paid for it. I kind of looked it up and I think it's 317 is what they're asking for. Like I played HQ or something. Ram lock works great. Uh, they talk about it being kind of halfway between an access lock because it has that, that sliding action. It's just a little bit easier to grab because it's almost like one of their auto, uh, OTF autos, the way they do that button. But the, the action on the thing has a spring back here, more like a shark lock. So if this thing was something that you can grab a hold of, you could do it like a shark lock. Uh, so it, it does, the action is much like the shark lock, and it gives you that kind of fidgety. Uh, I think as far as the location, it's not quite as easy 
to actuate as the shark lock. Um, great knife, and I'm super glad. Another one I wanted for a long time. Was hard to find, getting easier to find, and it's just a fun knife. I looked at the Amphibian too from them, uh, and I decided to go ahead and pick this guy up. And I'll probably pick up the Amphibian. I hope that I say that right. Anyway, you guys, uh, I'm sure this is a super long one. I can't really see what, how much time is on the timer, but, man, I had a good time at the show. If you've never gone to the show and you ever get a chance, you should go. It's expensive, not just buying knives, but hotel rooms. For me, it's airfare. Um, I'm, I'm having to rent a car. I just blew a ton of money. But, man, what a great experience. Not just the knives that I get to have. It's the knives con connected with all the experience, all the cool people. Uh, Kaiser event, went to that. That was, like, mobbed. So many people at that thing. It got a little out of hand, and they really didn't have enough room for everybody. But it was still fun. Um, anyway, that's what happened this weekend. It was great. The cat's getting better now. Uh, we thought he just had an infection, and it turned out he had... E. e. coli and we didn't even know until today and that's why he got sicker for a while and it was just there was phone calls and texts and i'm saying is it time for me to come home do i have to you know change my flight and come home early probably if i had driven uh i, I probably would have been going home early and i wouldn't have had nearly as many of these knives but cat's doing much better now and boy uh it's just fortunate that we got in Got him some antibiotics that would take care of that because we did, had no idea. Because it's supposed to be very dangerous for cats. So anyway, through all that stuff, that's what's happening. I got a follow up later with more uh, collection videos, uh, some more one on one time with these and videos, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.